Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Day Ahead Report. And here we're looking at the uh, S&P 500. And the main thing that I wanted to point out here is that, um, well, first, firstly, the, the Dow Jones is under 13,000 and the S&P 100 is, uh, 500 is under the 1,400 here. The Australian market is under the 4,500. So they're all under their closest, largest numbers, which puts them into a bearish bias. Now, we have been looking for lows um, for this particular trend that's been coming to the downside, uh, in this, this case through here. Um, and what we have now is we have uh, this little move up through here, which is the same in most indices and, uh, and also in currencies as well, um, more so the Australian dollar. And what we've got here is we've got this first little five wave structure to the upside now, um, when you get five waves uh, coming in the opposite direction from the trend that's been coming down, then you'll get another five waves. So uh, in that particular case, as an example here, if we've seen a trend coming to the downside as such like this, and then we get the first little five waves to the upside here, what we normally see in Elliott or what we can really be assured of is that after a little five waves in the opposite direction from the trend, we get five waves after a little ABC correction, then we'll get another five waves here. Okay, so that much we can kind of be um, assured of and um, what that would mean would mean that um, <clears throat> over the next session or two we should see some positive um, or at least stable moves in, in the indices and also for the Australian dollar. Now this little move through here so far is, 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 is what we can sort of assume to happen and that would be in three waves as such to there. Okay, so if it only moves in three waves then we would see a further five waves to the uh, downside as such. Now, um, this little three-wave structure that we've got here, that very well may turn into a, uh, a, a larger five-wave structure like this here, giving us a little five-wave structure like this here. That means that that little structure there would actually be a five-wave structure, this little move here, one, two, three, four, five. And if that's the case, then we would see a, another three-wave counter trend like this here and because we've got five waves in this structure here then we would get another five wave structure here so then we'll be building into a larger pattern to the upside while we're here so um, look it's just a matter of um, working through certain things so we know we've got the first little five here and we're going through the little ABC here we sure we'll get another five up here but that may be the end of it at that point so we could be working to the downside from that point there so that's the unknown little area that we need to navigate through. So just bearing in mind that. So um, look, if we get those three waves up and it fails, moves back into the price, moves back lower uh, into this top of this first little five wave structure here, moves down below that, then we know that we're going to continue to the downside as such. Um, but otherwise, we get three down and five back up there at that five wave structure then we know that we'll get another three here and so forth so it's just a little juncture that we need to get through and that's sort of where it is there so the other little point too that I haven't researched it yet but there is a Canadian bank holiday and a US bank holiday on the Monday as well um, I'm not sure if that's how that's going to affect the market so I need to have a look at that um, I know Thanksgiving is uh, around the 22nd of November so I'm not sure what that um, bank holiday means and uh, does it mean that uh, the US markets will be trading so it's something I need to uh, to research on the Monday so just be aware of that um, as such. Um, while we're here we're looking at the uh, the Australian market here the uh, the ASX 200 and um, you know as, we, as you know we were expecting a, a move across the 4500 and and that's happening and you know we always thought that um, well the, the normal sort of process is is that we have the arrival we have the reaction and then we have the first high above the level and then we have the correction across the 4500 here across the level uh, the 500 second strongest number we'd normally expect a three wave pattern across there and I think that that is part of it uh, here as such so I think we got the first swing down, the second swing, and we're in this, this swing here. Um, so it's, it's certainly not over. We're sort of in the thick of it. But they are tricky little things to sort of navigate as such. Um, we know that the 4500 here has been sort of rejected here. And now we've got subgroup two here being rejected. So 
if I just move straight over to the Australian market, I'm talking about it. That's the 4,500 here. It's been rejected there. And as you know, we've been slowly working through Group 2 here, and Group 2 is 65.72 on the 80. So here we've got our first move down, our bounce and so forth, failing to maintain support on the 72. Well, it had a bit there, but then it couldn't find support on the 80 to clear away so a breakthrough there makes it weak um, but now and it's moved down but now it's been retesting these little levels uh, through here again as well so if it did move just in those little five wave structures that we're talking about before if this market moves up through the 72 here that would be a break to the upside and you go along from that point there but while it's under that then that needs to be respected as a market working through the number and just as you know as it does to the downside the market moves down bounces across it drops down comes back up and retests it so failing through here in a, a resistance of 4450 uh here as a as a retested resistance would you know really cement that in as being the resistance uh through there so then you would look for short trades there and looking further to the downside i did mention in the um in the report this morning that uh, the 4500 is the sorry 4350 is a really important uh, level in through here and the 4350 here is uh, where really most of the sort of like where the most of the volume was turned over through here so that would be the support area there so a failing of 4500 uh, will drop it down to its next level here but I know that most of the volume was sort of uh, pinned uh, at this point here because basically as that was moving up there it was actually moving up on less volume as that was moving up through here so um, you need to have a look at the weekly chart to uh, see that but as that was moving up there the volume was getting weaker and weaker so the, m the main sort of buying area came in from the 4300 here and the 4350 and the retesting of support there so it, it's slightly you know rejecting the 4500 at the moment so it's in a you know it's in a it's it's in a negative area the bias is is weakness um until until we get support back on the 4500 here so just try and calculate that into your um into your trades as such so being under the 4500 it's got a, a weaker bias to it weakness to it and you'll be looking for short trades not long trades as such um and it's retested it sort of twice here now um lower uh lower highs and um and now it's also working with the next level so there are degrees of weakness that are coming in um yes we know this you know the series of supports from the 4400 all the way to the 44 you know 50 there's plenty of support so if that 44 50 becomes the resistance then it's certainly in another layer of weakness to the downside so that's got to be uh, taken in there so just sort of going back to the US markets here this little first five waves up here and ABC here should produce another uh, five waves up which would be a retest of the 1400 again so um, but look, this does having five waves here does give it a positive bias to the upside. So if you get one five, we'll get another five. So that would be the same with the um, with all the other markets as well. This is the U.S. market here, the Dow rather, um, and it's move up through here as well. So it's a five minute chart. So it's positive move to the upside here, uh, looking at an, an A and a B wave coming through here and a C wave. So if it if it it should stay the numbers here as well. You know that the one twenty eight, the twelve thousand eight hundred is important. Eight hundred is the first minor level below the thirteen thousand. So it's going to be its first support level. And then we know in this case that um, the 12772 here is, 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 is important and that will play more of a part as the market moves on. Uh, and of course, the other 72 number down here, the 12,720 um, is obviously coming into play as well. So, um, but as long as it stays above this, this move here, then um, we'll see another uh, retest to the upside there but this little pattern here is pointing to the downside because that little pattern in there that little ABC there is a corrective pattern so we should see more bearish uh, bias within here so um, yeah just see how that sort of unfolds but um, we'll be looking at the S&P 500 for that and the European markets are the same as well this is the DAX here so you can see the little five wave structure moving to the upside here and it'll have a correction moving back into this area here so um, the most important number here here is the 7200 here um, so the market is under that it should try and have a uh, crack at getting back above that because we've got the first five waves here um, and the European markets have obviously got some bearing on the 
uh, on, on the English market as uh, uh, the Australian market. The English market's got um, a relationship with the Australian market, but this is the uh, UK 100 here. And once again, we've got the same pattern down through here as the US market, um, but we've also got, this is an hourly chart, so we've got first five waves coming up through here. So we're looking at a five, three, five structure moving back up here. So it'll just give us that layer of uh, support over the next day or so. Uh, let's have a look at the commodities as the US dollar index is still climbing higher. Okay, just starting with copper here, copper's as they call it, Dr. Copper. It's um, quite central to uh, to the base metals market and, and certainly to the materials sector in, in Australia and Canada and so forth. So we're looking at this particular pattern coming through here as a, um, as a triangle pattern getting narrower and narrower. And um, uh, we're obviously coming into like support zone through here. So it's just sort of splitting hairs rather and finding uh, the low through here. But what I sort of find interesting is that... Um, as that um, uh, Rio and uh, BHP, are, you know, have already sort of found support in the in the material sector. So when we look at um, BHP here, this is the US BHP. Um, we're working with first of all working with 65 here. Once the market's above 65, a medium level through here, we knew that it was positive at least, you know, for for the time that it's above there. The next level to the upside is uh, 72, um, you know, and it's been toying with 72 for quite some time here. As our local BHP, if I bring that up here at um, at 34, <clears throat> so you know we always considered the bounce off 30, um, and we also knew that the supply was all this sort of block here in terms of volume through here. But in attacking that or chipping away at the sellers here. Uh, the demand chipping away at supply, so to speak. Um, one of the steps was to find support on 34, which is the Fibonacci number, um, and you know it's it's doing that quite well. Uh, so this this uh, chipping away at it through here it hasn't really seen any buying volume in come in here just yet, but we haven't really seen any um, you know selling volume in through here yet. But you know I wouldn't be surprised to see another sort of you know test into this sort of area here before we we push up through through here further but i guess what i'm saying is that you know we're looking at sort of base metal markets uh, as such but um, we're seeing you know bhp kind of leading the way so you know in the general market the uh you know the material sector and the utilities are still under you know haven't really sort of bolted away uh as as you know as some of the other leading markets uh have, have done you know obviously um the finance sector leading the way out, um, you know, and, and that's normally the case with, you know, the supply money to the system, so to speak. Um, but materials and um, and utilities haven't really done that just yet. They'll be sort of the under, the underdogs. And um, so what we're looking for really is we're looking for the second basis of support, and that thirty-four dollars would would be that. Um, I guess when we have a look at, say, some of the commodity indexes, um, I like the uh, the DJ UBS one for that, and, and we've talked about this before. As such, we understood um, some time ago that the medium level here for this particular market, here's the daily chart here, it's the time zone here, is what we were looking for here is we we're looking for a five-wave structure to the upside, and this is the strong third wave in here, and the correction here be the fourth, and and the fifth wave up here in in five waves to the upside. Most in commodity markets, it, they sort of extend in the fifth wave here. But what we're looking for now is we're looking for because we've got a little sort of five wave structure to the upside there. We're looking for a three wave structure to the downside, and you know it normally pulls back. 30, uh, 61, 50, 60 percent. So we're kind of getting, you know, into that sort of 50 percent area through there. There's, um, there certainly could be a little bit more down in in here before we see, uh, if, before we see an upside uh, on this. But it is getting close. The material sector, I think, is only something like 17 percent of this commodity index here. Uh, so it does encompass sort of, you know, that you know, all the commodities and such. Um, but um, you know, certainly a good whack of it. But the main point here is that we've got our five wave structure to the upside. We're getting our completing our third, you know, our, our corrective process to the downside is completing. So once that is complete, then we'll see that 
uh, move uh, in in the general commodities uh, to to the upside there. Um, but of course, we'd need to see a lower US dollar come into play. And when we're speaking about the US dollar, we still got more upside in the US dollar index why this still plays out further to the downside here before we see a turnaround but it is getting into into shape so if we look at um, the US dollar index uh, here it's 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 above the 81 now and we're looking any any upside here would be looking at this area up through here the 8172 area up up through here that's where we'd see that sort of rally coming to that's simply while this is above uh, the the um, the 81 here. Um, of, of course, the um, the gold market's doing its uh, uh, own thing, of course, as, as a fear-based uh, indicator out there and printing presses running and so forth that needs that money. Um, so we're still seeing, as mentioned the other day, we're, we're seeing this as a positive structure to the upside here, and we're staying with that story. Um, so we've got five waves up here, so after correction we'll see another five up there, and this is what we're seeing now, so it'll be up for one and back for two, up for three, back for four, and up for five. So it should continue to build to the upside the same with silver doing the same thing as well. So if we just bring silver into the fold here, we know that we've got a positive structure through here, and we also know that we've got a positive uh, structure coming through here as well. But it does does point out that um, what we've got here so far is we do have five waves here, three waves here, and five waves there. That can also be counted as an ABC correction to the upside, an ABC rally in terms of an A, a B, and a C wave in five waves going to the upside. I think that's got one more little push in through there. Um, so, uh, yeah, look, we need to... Um, we need to get past the concept of the, the ABC rally. So we need to see a larger five waves move into play. So I think that um, in the case of silver and be the same with gold as well, uh, but in silver's case here, finding support on top of 30, 33 here would be what you'd be looking for. Uh, and in that we'd normally see some either reaction from the 33 coming back down here. Um, but uh, in one way or another, we'll be seeing uh, support come in on the uh, 33 there somewhere, but you just need to give it, whichever way the correction is going to be, you need to give it time to have some type of correction here. It's either going to have the arrival here, which I think is going to be the case, then a reaction looking for support, and then have creating the first high above the level, and then the correction unfolding at that point there. So there'll still be, <clears throat> you know, there'll still be, um, it's still quite a bit of time to be spent there. Well, this is this correction here is pretty much the standard um, classic trading levels pattern where we have the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, then the correction. That correction there corrects, rebalances that previous trend out. That's the important part. And then it's a matter of finding support. Normally, we'd look on top of the 30 two there for support. In this case, we've got it um, a little bit earlier through here, um, but anyway, stepping stepping up nicely through there. So much the same thing there. There's only two patterns that can occur here, and one is the, the classic normal trading levels pattern, and the other is the overshoot pattern, where it just overshoots and then comes back down and, and so forth and works into that particular number there. So there's not a lot that can happen, but what we want to see here in gold and silver is that we want to see it move past this possible A, B, C rally. We want to see it sort of develop into a larger five waves and to do that we'd be looking for support on the 3300 there but of course we want to see a correction there first um, and a solid uh, foundation for a move to the upside there. Okay let's have a look at uh, FX. Okay, with the US dollar here I just want to point out that um, uh, this is a strong trend in through here. This one here is a little bit smaller. We can see that uh, this move up here is shorter, and then we've got this one here, which is still going, but it's at this stage it's shorter as well. So what we could expect across here is we could expect to see, even though it can push up, you know, to 81. Uh, 30, uh, a little bit higher up, 81.20, 81.30, um, then we should see it fold back into uh, the 81 here. And as it does fold back in through here, then we can likely to see a push up in the other market. So when we're looking at the um, the euro, for instance, we know that the 72 number here, the 127, uh, 72 on the five minute chart here, has really captured it uh, as resistance through here. But um, as we're talking about in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones and uh, the other, the foot see and so forth they off their lows they've had five waves up through here and this is much the same here as well in terms of the one the two 
five waves in here for the third, the fourth, and the fifth here. So it's going through a correction here. So we're thinking that um, uh, that this can certainly break to the upside here after it'll push to the downside here and being part of the bounce on the 127 here. So just be aware of that because the S&P on the hourly should follow the, um, the euro there as well. So looking for the... Uh, with caution because you know the trend is strong to the downside and we've got resistance here we need to be on the right side of these numbers um, but uh, if we're correct with the S&P 500 and so forth having five waves off the low there then we should see another five waves to the upside there and that means that the the dollar index would should fall back into the 81 uh, so that's what we're sort of looking for so just keep an eye on that a break to the upside through here would be the trigger for the upside there and the same for the Australian dollar as well the Australian dollar's got, not that it's very clear here, but basically it's, when you open it up, it's got quite a clear five-wave structure to the upside there. We were looking for the five-wave low to come in here, which is coming into play. So a five-wave structure up here, then ABC correction back. Should pretty much stay under the 103.72 there, um, uh, above that rather. Um, we should see another push to the upside through there. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for, um, with all markets, we've got that little five waves up. We're looking for an ABC back. And the Australian dollar, by the way, has been a bit of a leader in market direction, uh, so we should see a um, move up through there. You know, there's still still a lot of buying going on in from uh, other countries like Switzerland, hedging their books up in terms of uh, pretty much up to a billion dollars now in terms of buying Australian dollars. So there, there is buyers there, um, but we still need to be on the right side of the closest largest number. So um, do look for a, um, a bit of a push down here while the bit of a push down here and then, then, a, then a move up through here. They're obviously through this Group 1 here, this 104, Group 1, 10, 20, 30. There's a lot of uh, resistance of, you know, supply in here. So, it's you know, it's going to really sort of struggle there. But if it does show really strong, you know, moves up through 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 this, then, um, then you know that we're on the right track there. Uh, but once again, um, it's supply and resistance in Group 1. And once again, uh, finding support on top of 104, 30, top of group one is another step to the upside so there's a series of steps up there and this can also be an a and a b and a c wave up through here as well but because we've got five waves here we can expect five waves there and the australian market has been pretty sort of buoyant um, even when the u.s markets are down so um, if we're going to see the s&p 500 with five waves to the upside then uh, they should give us the s&p should give us another five waves to the upside and that will be any excuse at all for the australian market needs to run to the upside so um, taking that on board there alrighty well uh, good morning uh, and good luck